I'm ready. <coughs> Compound cuts are cuts that you can make on a bandsaw or a scroll saw and cr create uh, three-dimensional uh, sculpture-like effects, something like, uh, like this. Uh, the basic technique is pretty easy. You simply trace uh, your pattern on a piece of wood. You have a, usually a front pattern, goes on the face, a side pattern, and in some cases you even have a third pattern that would go on the top or the bottom. The, um, this makes uh, uh, this makes the a three-dimensional shape when you remove all the stock. The trick is that you've got to uh, save your scrap as you go and, and in between the cuts reassemble the board so that you have something square and rectangular that will sit flat on the saw. By the way, if you want to make uh, what I'm about to show you, we've got the plans up there on the blackboard. Let's go for cut number one here. Now, those of you who are watching me cutting are probably thinking, well, he's cutting away the pattern on the front. How will we be able to, to uh, cut that? Well, the fact is that, as I told you, you have to put this thing all back together. And uh, I use uh, just regular masking tape. And masking tape is thin enough that you can see your pattern right through it. There you go. The lock is once again rectangular. Now, because we're cutting through less stock, we have to change the position of our blade guide, and we make the second cut.
there you go. You remove the, uh, the paper and the tape, and uh, what you have left is a three-dimensional shape that looks a little bit like a deer. I came up with this design in uh, 1979, and we published it in the first issue of Hands-On Magazine, and thereafter I began seeing it show up at flea markets and craft shows all over the place. And I want to say to those of you who have spent late evenings cutting out hundreds of these for church bazaars, or for those of you who someday will spend uh, late evenings cutting out hundreds of these for church bazaars, uh, I really apologize. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Now there you go. Now. <clears throat> That's fairly that's fairly simple sculpture, but there's a um, there's a lot more you can do with this. You come back here, take a look at uh, some other things I've done with this uh, same technique. Um, this is a uh, Noah's Ark. I'm going to swing the camera that was on the bandsaw back to that ark for just a minute, so that you can uh, you can get a good look at it while I uh, I. Uh, there we go. Take it apart. This was uh, designed by my wife, Mary Jane, and uh, I took a solid chunk of jellyatong and cut out all the pieces, and it actually is, is three boxes, one on top of the other. Um, this is the lid to the first box, <coughs> and that holds some of the animals. This is the lid and the second box and then finally the third box is the hull. All of which were cut out on the bandsaw from a single solid piece of wood. Uh, pretty cool, huh? This is, um, this is also uh, a little bit of compound cutting. This is a chest set that I made a while back. Let me put the lid down here. The individual, the individual pieces are cut out on a, a scroll saw, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to um, come over here and put them on the edge of the uh, edge of the scroll saw so you can see them a little bit better. There, that's a, that's a castle, and as you can see. The front profile and the side profile are exactly the same. Uh, same with the uh, with the queen and the king. The bishop is a little different. It's got a slot in uh, in in its head for the mitre uh, on one side. The pawn is the is uh, the same. The only uh, piece that has a, uh, a real difference between both the profile and uh, the uh, uh, the front uh, silhouette is is the knight. Uh, it looks roughly like a lot, roughly like a horse. We I made uh, I made one set in walnut, the other set in spalted maple, so that. Uh, You've got your white and your black, your fire and your smoke, whatever, however you want to, however you want to say that. But uh, anyway, all of this, all of this was was cut out on uh, on a scroll saw using exactly the same technique I just I just showed you. You cut out one profile, tape the piece back together so that it becomes a rectangle again, turn it 90 degrees, and cut out the second profile. Um, In, a, in addition to making these uh, sculptural type shapes that you see here, you can also make some freehand style um, curves. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. This is a, uh, uh, a freehand piece that I did uh, last week. Uh, it looks like um, somebody took a block of wood and started to melt it. 
Let me show you how it's done here real quick. Let's go back to the bandsaw. Move. Drew will... Uh, there we go. Now this is, uh, this is completely, completely free form. You, uh, you don't have to, um, uh, to mark anything. All you need to do is make one cut at, uh, on one side, turn it 90 degrees and make another cut. I'll show you. Now I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark the outside corners so that I can see them plainly. And I'm also going to number each one of them so that I can make sure that I get them in the right order. They're numbered one, two, three, and four counterclockwise. Now I take this and I turn each of these around 180 degrees. There's the three, there's the two, there's the one, and there's the two. See, I brought all the corners together and they're still numbered one, two, three, four, counterclockwise. And look, if I hold them just right, all the curves line up and make a, a wiggly shape. And uh, you can do some really, really strange cabriole types legs like this and some absolutely incredibly ugly lamp stands. Uh-oh. Cool technique. And also, they, they also make great puzzles. You can, um, you can take this, uh, the same thing and you can make two cuts in each side, getting it so that you get nine pieces instead of four, and uh, it makes a great uh, it makes a great puzzle for kids. Now let me show you one more compound cutting technique, and uh, I can't take credit for this. Actually, actually, Drew brought this to me uh, a little while uh, ago, a couple of months ago, and he had an idea for a leg. This, in this compound cutting technique, uh, you're not creating an outside shape, you're creating an inside shape. Uh, Drew made a series of piercing cuts that when, uh, when uh, they were completed looked like a vine or lace uh, going up a leg. Uh, we're now taking this idea, and this is a full-sized leg for, uh, uh, for a table, and it'll have just one lacy portion right here in the in the uh, in the middle. We haven't gotten to the point where um, uh, we've sanded or drew a little carving on each one to kind of give them a round over, uh, uh, like the, uh, a round over to make it look more viney. The um, technique 
is even simpler than what I showed you. You take the, the wood, you mark your pattern on it. Uh, once again, you can see there's a pattern on one surface and then 90 degrees away. Uh, drill holes <coughs> through each of the pattern uh, areas that you want to remove. Uh, I tell you, sometimes, sometimes it's easy to see this because it's got to look like a vine. But sometimes in some patterns, it's easier to shade the parts that you want to remove just so that you don't accidentally remove the wrong part. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to thread a, our... Um, uh, our blade on the scroll saw up through each hole in turn and and cut out the waste. Now I'm not going to do each and every one of these. I'm just going to do one for you so you get the idea. You see that seen uh, see here I've already done one. Um, I'm using uh, a precision ground tooth blade. Uh, PGT blades cut very very smooth and because there's a lot of sanding on this uh, on this to do uh, otherwise the PGT blades will save you a lot of uh, uh, of time let me uh, thread this up through the hole Clamp it in the upper blade mount, tension it, some people like to work with the, uh, with the hold down, some people don't, I kind of, I kind of, on circumstances like this I kind of like it. I'm going to use um, uh, a uh, foot switch to turn this on and off. Foot switch allows me to um, keep both hands on the work while I'm working. Just enough room to do that cut. Okay. Now 
There you go. That doesn't look like much now, but uh, you keep on uh, keep on doing it, and uh, pretty soon, pretty soon it will. Uh, great, uh, gr great technique. Wonderful de uh, decorative uh, results. Uh, just write us if you uh, have questions. We'll see you. Thank you.